everyone welcome back to my channel so for today i actually wanted to do something a little bit different and so for today's video i'm going to be talking about why i veil at catholic mass and kind of my journey towards veiling um and then i'm going to go through my veil collection so if that sounds interesting at all to you then just keep watching so growing up i actually had no idea that veiling was even a thing I didn't know anyone who veiled, um, I had never seen anyone veiling at mass ever, and I didn't even know that it used to be mandatory for women, like I had no idea about veiling at all. Um, and then it wasn't until after I graduated college I started, you know, slowly journeying back towards the faith, and my brother and I were looking into going to a traditional Latin mass, and as we're like you know, hyping ourselves up, like, oh, we're gonna go, we're gonna do this. Um, my brother stops me at one point and goes, oh, but just so you know, like, women typically wear a veil to Latin mass. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I literally was like, what are you talking about? And, you know, he was like, oh, it's not mandatory. Like, if you don't want to wear one, you don't have to, but you, like, you might stand out if you don't wear a veil. And um, also at this point, like, I was not... I wasn't dressing immodestly at mass, but I was that person that was wearing like sweatpants to mass and my brother was like, yeah, you're gonna want to like not do that either. Like he was like, you gotta get a dress, you gotta get a veil, like you gotta switch it up, girl. And I was like, mm, it's a no for me, dog. Like I was like, I'm not doing that. Um, and from that moment on, I just was like so against veiling. Like from the moment I heard about it, I was like, that's dumb it's oppressive, it's sexist, like women should not have to cover up if men don't have to cover up, and I just was totally against veiling. I actually hated it for years, like anytime it was brought up, I would get really angry. Um, yeah, and that's how I was for years. As you can probably tell, I used to be a very like uptight, in-your-face feminist, and so the idea of veiling just seemed to go totally against everything that I stood for back then and I just felt so passionately against veiling. And looking back, it's kind of weird because I always had a devotion to the Virgin Mary. Um, I always felt very close to her, very called to her, I prayed the rosary a lot. So looking back, it's kind of weird to think that I was so against veiling because I feel like veiling is a way that we can honor the Virgin Mary so you would think it would be something I'd be more open to but no I was fully against it hated it hated it so one day I'm praying the rosary as usual and as I'm praying the rosary I have a vision and that sounds really weird but I had this vision of myself at mass wearing a veil and I still remember I was holding those rosary beads I was praying I had the vision and I literally went oh, I have to start veiling and again at this point in my life I don't understand veiling I hate it so I was really upset that I was being called to it but you know when mom tells you to do something you do that like I, don't, I was like I'm not I'm not gonna say no I'm not gonna say no, but I'm gonna be upset about it. So I um I start doing research into it. And my older brother actually this year is gonna be graduating with his master's in Catholic theology. So I approach him first and I'm just like, hey, what do you know about veiling? And he didn't know much, but he told me a few things that made me feel better and it started softening my heart towards the idea of it. So one of the things that he told me that actually really helped was that there is a certain point in history where you could tell the status of a woman by the quality of her hair. And so by veiling at mass, women were actually making themselves all equal. And so when they would cover their hair at mass, every woman was equal in the sight of the Lord. And that, that helped me. And it also helped to know that there was a male counterpart to it where at the same time, you could tell the status of a man by the quality of his hat. And so men would take their hats off at mass to show that they were all equal. So that really helped soften my heart. And I started looking deeper into it. 
and while I was looking deeper into veiling, I also encountered other things in Catholicism that I had always felt were like sexist and oppressive, um, like how traditionally girls shouldn't be altar servers and women shouldn't be Eucharistic ministers. Um, I always, you know, things like that always made me upset. And although I, you know, submitted to the authority of the church and I didn't like it. And so while I was researching veiling, I also learned more about these other things and I realized that I was totally wrong about everything. And everything that I thought was actually the opposite. And it kind of helped me deepen my relationship with Christ because there were no longer these barriers. And I didn't even realize that they were barriers, but after I kind of worked through these things, I realized that they actually were hindering my relationship with Christ. And so it was actually this really great thing that researching veiling actually made me a better Catholic overall. So as I'm on this journey, you know, towards researching veiling, becoming a better Catholic, things in my life start shifting. So I ended a relationship that wasn't godly and I start distancing myself from friends that weren't, you know, on the right path. And I start to join Catholic groups online and making Catholic friends online. Um, and, you know, I just started doing like Bible in a year, catechism in a year, like researching a lot of things. And one huge change that happened was my uh, full acceptance of the real presence of the Eucharist. So I'm a cradle Catholic. I've always known that the Eucharist is the body of Christ. Um, and intellectually, I believed that. But in my spirit, I did not believe that. Um, so, you know, growing up, if somebody asked me, what is the Eucharist? I would say the body of Christ. And if someone said, do you really think that's his actual flesh? I would say, of course, but my spirit didn't believe it. Only my intellect. And so at this point in my life, I don't know what changed. I really don't know. But I just remember having this moment where I fully realized the real presence of the Eucharist and my spirit and my mind both believed it. And once that happened, it was like everything changed. Um, I realized what a gift Mass truly is and what a gift the Holy Eucharist is and how sacred it is. And I just knew I had to change. I had to change the way that I was present in these spaces. And I knew that I also needed to be a visible change because I needed other people to see so that they would also be inspired to change the way that they were present in these spaces. And I'm not saying like all women should fail, but I'm just saying that all people should be more aware of how they're presenting at mass and how they're, you know, interacting with that space. And I feel like a lot of people have lost their reverence for Mass and for the Eucharist because they don't truly believe in the real presence. And so I knew once I changed, I had to inspire other people to change and come to this full realization as well. And I felt like it all just cultivated into this one thing, which was veiling because I was called to it and it was a visible change that people could see and they could wonder like, why is she veiling? Like, why is she doing that? And then, you know, it would slowly inspire people to be more reverent at Mass and to come to the Eucharist. So at this point, I am fully accepting my calling to veiling. Um, and so I tell my family that I'm getting a veil and they knew I was like on this journey towards veiling. And I finally was like, all right, I'm there. I got it. I'm getting a veil. And my mom was like, well, if you're going to get a veil, like get me a veil, like whatever veil you get, just get one for me too. So I did. And I still remember the first Sunday getting ready and putting my veil on and I was so scared because I go to ordinary form mass and no one at my parish is veiling <laughs> um, and I live in a very liberal area. I mean, as you can tell, I used to be like a really raging feminist, right? 
and I just felt like people would misunderstand veiling the way that I used to and so I was so nervous I was like oh people are gonna judge me people are probably gonna say something mean to me and I just had all these worries and I just remember feeling so terrible getting ready that morning like I was so nervous I was so scared I was anxious I was overthinking even just leaving my house I was like oh my gosh whew, like what's gonna happen I was so scared and I got to mass and there was that initial like oh everyone's looking at me but then it just went away and I it was just a regular mass like it was really no big deal and I remember as my mom and I are leaving we're walking towards the back of the church and we see this woman that we've become friendly with over the years um, and she, you know, like usual, she stops us, says hi, we're talking, and then she grabs my veil, and she goes, I love this, where did you get it? I want to get one. And the relief that just washed over my whole body, I was like, oh my gosh, thank you, thank you. Like, I was so like, oh god, I needed that, like, I needed that. And so that was almost a year ago at this point, and now at my parish there are like a couple of other people who veil um so it's definitely not <laughs> common at all but there's a few of us that veil and I think that's really awesome because I was the only one at first and now there's a few so I'm hoping that you know if if more women feel called to it that they will be brave enough to do it I also just want to make a disclaimer that veiling is not necessary um, it's not necessary for salvation. It has nothing to do with your state of grace. So if you don't feel called to veil, that's totally fine and you do not need to veil at all. It is totally possible to still be reverent and fully present at mass without wearing a veil. So if that's not your calling, please do not feel like you should be veiling. Like, like I said, most of the women in my life do not veil. And this was a very personal calling for me. Um, so if I hadn't gotten that calling, I probably wouldn't be veiling either. So just wanted to make that disclaimer that if you don't veil, please don't feel pressured to start um, and don't feel like you're being judged for not veiling. Okay, so as you can see, I've taken all of my veils off of the wall behind me. Um, I'm gonna go through all of the veils in my collection so far and all of them will be linked down below. So if you see one that you like and you wanna get it, just check below, I will have everything linked. So I'm gonna start with my first ever veil. This veil is from Etsy and it is an infinity veil. And it's just this beautiful gold champagne color with this flower pattern. Um, it did come with a wig clip sewn in, um, but unfortunately the wig clip broke so it doesn't even work. <laughs> Um, so when I would wear this, I would stuff these pins. Um, I'm not going to try them on. If you would like to see a try-on video where I style all of my veils with a modest outfit for masks, I am totally open to do that. Um, but for this video, I will not be trying them on. Um, but I will say that this veil was not my favorite veil. Um, it... It's a very like stiff material so when you're wearing it it feels like it doesn't lay correctly I don't know how to say it um, but I got my mom the same veil and she felt the same way she actually brought it up first and I was like okay I wasn't gonna say anything but I don't really I don't really enjoy this um, it's from a small Etsy shop so I don't know if their other veils are better um, if they're made from like different materials but yeah this one it's like a beautiful embroidered pattern, but it's just not my favorite veil. Next is this beautiful blue infinity veil. Um, it has this like really beautiful two-toned um, embroidered flower pattern. And then also it has a hair comb sewn into it. So it's very secure when you're wearing it. And this is actually one of my favorite veils. I feel like it just is so gorgeous, so stunning. Um, I get a lot of compliments on this veil when I wear it. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's just, it's so beautiful, it's so well made. Next up is this gorgeous infinity veil. 
Um, this probably is one of my favorite designs. Um, I love this um, green and pink flower embroidery. Um, and like the last veil, it has a hair comb sewn in, if I can find it. Here it is. It has a hair comb sewn in, so it's also very secure. I originally bought this veil for Easter, so some of these I bought intentionally um, for certain occasions. So this one was my Easter veil. Then I have this um, black infinity veil. And it's literally just a black lace veil. Um, there's nothing really to it. It doesn't have a wig clip or a hair comb. So when I use it, I just put bobby pins in. And this one I had bought for Holy Thursday. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I always feel very sad on Holy Thursday. So I typically only wear like black or brown. So I definitely didn't want to be wearing like a <laughs> blue or like pink veil to Holy Thursday mass. So I bought a black one. Next I have this infinity veil. Um, it's just a simple red and gold veil. It has that gold trimming and then this beautiful flower, um, red lace and it's kind of stretchy. Um, I bought this veil for Pentecost. So yeah, I actually got a, like a good amount of compliments on this veil when I wore it on Pentecost. So that was pretty cool. Now we're getting into a different style of veil. Um, when I first started veiling, I really thought that I would love the infinity style veils and I, I do really love them, but um, then I started branching out and I realized that other styles are really great too. So this is actually a D-shaped veil um, and it's this gorgeous, gorgeous um, pink embroidered pattern if you can. Yeah, it has this like beautiful edging and then this embroidered pattern all over and again has the hair comb so it's very secure um yeah i love this veil i bought this one to wear for any um mass where the liturgical color is rose so i just wore this one during advent um for the rose colored candle sunday um yeah so for this one a veil company actually reached out to me and asked me if they could send me a veil for free so i could do promo for them and i did but then, um, then the company ended up being kind of scammy. Uh, yeah, it was a whole situation really. So uh, I have this veil, but I won't be linking it. And I will not be supporting that, <laughs> that veil company anymore. All right, now we're gonna move into my two favorite veils. So, I thought that my favorite style would be the infinity style, but actually this style is my favorite. So it's just these long like rectangle shaped veils. I just love this style. Um, so I have this one and this one is actually inspired by Our Lady of Guadalupe, who I actually have a devotion to. She was who I was praying the rosary to when I felt the call to veil. Um, so this veil holds a special place in my heart. Um, it's this beautiful gold trim with this really beautiful green fabric. I feel like for this one, I'm just going to throw it on just because you can't really see it that well on camera, but like, yeah, so it's like that. And last but not least, this is my actual favorite veil. Um, it's this gorgeous red, um, Veil. It has like flowers and this embroidered scalloped edge and it has a hair comb. So I will say that um, the other rectangle veil that I have, it doesn't have a hair comb, um, but the company that I bought it from, you can request that they sew one in. So the next time I ordered from them, I definitely um, requested the hair comb. It just makes it so much easier. Um, yeah, so this one is my favorite just because... Let me see if I can actually <laughs> put this on. Because I can just like literally just have it chilling behind me like that. And I don't have to have it like in my face worried about it. And it's just like a really cute, like gorgeous little veil. So yeah. So yeah, guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Um, let me know if you would want me to make a video trying on my veils and like styling them with mass outfits because I would definitely love to do that for you guys. Um, and other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I'll do it so good.